Hey Superstars, it's your girl Malika aka Miss Magic back with another video. Today we are making Parmesan encrusted honey mustard baked pork chops. When I tell you, oh, oh my god. But first if you are new here, welcome to my channel. Thank you for coming. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button for me. Give me a big thumbs up and hit that notification bell so you can be alerted when I do post another video. Alright guys, let's get straight into these pork chops. We are starting off with four nice sized chops, um, thoroughly cleaned and washed and patted dry. So uh, make sure you pat your meat dry. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and use a binder. I did an any mini mini mo, which I'm glad I chose honey mustard because it came out fabulous. That's the binder that we're going to use. Next, you're going to need some panko breadcrumbs. Also, I use Italian style. And then I have Parmesan cheese that I'm going to mix in with my panko breadcrumbs. I'm going to need some cooking spray, two for the color, and then these are my seasonings. I won't be using all of these. I never do. I just kind of mix and match. But I have my adobo salt, my slap your mama, which I could put in everything because that's the stuff. Garlic powder, body of seasoning, black pepper, red cayenne pepper for kick as always. And then I've got a wire rack with my pan and wax paper. All right, so we're going to go ahead now and we're going to mix up our seasonings. And I'll show you what I wound up using. So I used a little adobe seasoning, maybe about one tablespoon. Next, I used garlic powder, another tablespoon of garlic powder. A little or more, um, I don't measure Maybe about one teaspoon, no, that ain't a teaspoon. One tablespoon of paprika, one tablespoon of Slap Your Mama. I put that on everything. I swear by Slap Your Mama, it is reduced sodium. Ground pepper, one tablespoon of ground pepper. And then now I'm just going to put a dab of the cayenne pepper in there. You don't want too much heat. And then I wound up, I guess I did use all my seasonings. I wound up putting a tablespoon of body of uh, seasoning in there as well. Well, I won't say a tablespoon. So now I'm going to go ahead and mix up all of my seasonings as I always do. And now we're going to go ahead and put our seasonings on all four chops. Front side and then we'll turn it over and we'll put it on the other side as well. I seasoned the other two chops I had off camera guys because... I don't know where my big, big, big platter is to put all my meat on, but whatever. All right, so after that, we're going to go ahead and put our chops on a platter. I make sure I use all of my seasoning. Now we're going to use our honey mustard, and we're going to go ahead and shake it so we won't get that, that liquidy stuff that comes out. You know what I'm talking about. And um, we're going to go ahead and slather on our honey mustard. Use a basting brush and make sure you put it on all over your pork chop. And when I tell you guys, oh my goodness, this turned out so good. I actually usually use Dijon mustard or regular mustard for my binder. And I just was trying something different. And this honey mustard, it gave my pork chops the sweet, savory taste that I was looking for. I'm, I will be putting this in regular rotation. All right, we're going to go ahead and do the other side with the honey mustard. And then just go ahead and baste it the same way. And like I said, I couldn't find my long pan, but I promise you I basted the other chops the same way, which I'll show you guys in just a second. I just got to get all this slathered on, you know. And there's my other two chops. All right, now we are ready to get these breaded. So I just got a bowl big enough. You want a bowl that's large enough to hold one uh, pork chop. I'm going to go ahead and put some panko in the bowl. You're going to need way more than this, but I don't like to do too much because um, I don't want to waste breading. So enough for two. So and then I have my Parmesan cheese. And I want to say this is about ugh, a fourth of a cup. That I mixed in with maybe a half a cup of panko. So we're going to go ahead and mix that up. And you actually probably could have used more Parmesan cheese. Because on my second um, batch I'm going to use more Parmesan cheese. But still came out awesome. 
All right, so now we put your, you got your wire rack to the side. As soon as you bread your pork chops, you're going to put them on the wire rack. So now I got my pork chop. We're going to go ahead and bread it. Put it in the um, panko and the parmesan mix. Turn it over. Make sure if you, it doesn't get all the way seasoned that you go ahead and put some panko on it, which I'll show you guys later. Now I'm going to go ahead and bread my other ones. All four of them, same way. And you'll see kind of what I do in just a second. Because to be honest with you, it wasn't enough in the first batch. But make sure all of it is covered with this mixture. If you don't want to do Parmesan, you can just use Panko. But that Parmesan gives it that extra, extra crisp. Now I'm adding more Panko and more Parmesan. Like I said, I do two pork chops at a time because I don't want the uh, to waste my Panko. So go ahead, dip your pork chop in the panko mixture. If it doesn't get fully covered, take some of the panko from the sides and press it into your pork chops. Make sure it is firmly pressed and then just shake off the excess. And we are basically ready to get these baked after we do this last pork chop. All right, so this is how our pork chops look on the rack. Once again, if you see any missing spots, just take your leftover panko and just press it lightly into your pork chops. So I'm going to do that. That's what I mean by wasting panko. I, I don't like to waste food. I poured too much in there, but hey, it is what it is. You got to throw away that because it's been contaminated with raw meat. So we're going to press that in. And then now you're going to go ahead and take your cooking spray. And like I said, this is just going to give it some color while it's baking. And we're going to spray our cooking spray on top of our pork chops. This is just for color, guys. If you don't like cooking spray, you don't have to use it. Now we're going to go ahead and place our pork chops in a 475 degree oven for 30 to 45 minutes. It should be about in that middle. Always, always, guys, though, because it is uh, pork pork you want to check your temperature and you want to make sure that it is at 145 degrees no higher than that you don't want to overcook your pork chops plus we're going to brown these in a minute so they're going to continue to cook so if you're not sure about temperatures use your thermometer and it will tell you and if it's at 145 which all of my chops are a couple of them might have been a little bit over they are done Okay, I went on and browned them. I didn't show that on camera. I browned them in the broiler. And voila, dinner is ready. I served this up with my fried cabbage. I have a recipe on my channel about my fried cabbage. And the oh my, these turned out so tender, so crispy, breaded, and delicious. There it is. All right, do you cut up your food for your family? I cut up my food for my husband and my kids just because, I don't know, for, for the love. But thank you guys for watching. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button for me. Give me a big thumbs up. Hit that notification bell so you can be alerted when I do post another video. I hope you enjoy. All right, guys. I hope to see you in past, present, and future videos. Love you guys. Goodbye and enjoy.